morning with a very special guest. This is a break from what I uh, normally do, but you're going to love it. I am really thrilled to have Jennifer Harris with me, who is the author of a lovely book about women, girls, girl power, the stars, quilting, art, creativity, learning beyond what your boundaries were. It's called She Stitched the Stars, the, a story of Ellen Harding Baker's solar system quilt. And look, there's the book and I have it too. So welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so glad to be here. Thank you for offering me this, this chance to talk with you and get to know you a little bit better. Happy, happy, happy to do it. Um, a lot of my favorite things all at once here. Um, so this is your first children's book, right? It is. It's not my first book, but it's my first children's book. So it's really fun to be able to switch genres. And my children are thrilled because finally I've published something that they care about and which has great pictures. So what is it? Tell us a little bit about what you do when, when you're not playing with dolls or uh, working on this book. <laughs> I am a professor of 19th century American literature, and so I mostly do literary history. I'm not the kind of person who is um, talking about, you know, scansion and poetry and lines. I'm more the person who's talking about, well, let's look at this person in their historical context, or let's dig a little deeper and see what it means to write this for them in their, their time and their place. And I'm really interested in um, how people respond to their world or try to use their writing to change their world. Which certainly carries through into this book, but just out of my own curiosity, are there particular authors you find yourself returning to? I'm actually a little bit unusual in that I tend to unearth people who haven't been talked about as much. So people who've been forgotten or who've written things that have been forgotten. And often I look at people who uh, were less valued in their historical moment. And so their writings weren't likely to be circulated or preserved. Their own personal papers weren't likely to be preserved. And so they get forgotten about. So I work a lot on African-American women's writers. Um, and I've worked a bit on black Canadian writers as well in the 19th century. And you know, the, the challenge is, often, how do you write about people when nothing's been preserved about them? Which again, ties back to what you did in this book. So tell us how you found out about, I'm going to get her name wrong, Ellen Harding Baker. How did you so, come across her story? I was actually kind of doing a rant. I do random internet searches looking, looking for lost people, right? Which isn't the easiest thing to do. I want to find someone that no one knows about on the internet. Uh, the internet knows everything. And so often I'll go through newspapers using keyword searches and things. And so you stumble across neat little um, vignettes when you start using certain combination keyword searches in the 19th century. And here was this fantastic woman who'd done this amazing thing and who hadn't, hadn't been treated with the respect historically that you would think. Now, that's changed obviously in recent years. People have written about her on popular blogs. She, her quilt is preserved in a museum, but at the time she was treated in newspaper items a bit like a talking dog or, you know, isn't this just a funny little quirky human interest story? Look at this woman thinking she can create a quilt of the solar system and use it to teach science. Like, and she's married on top of that. Married women don't do those things. And Mothers so- Mothers don't do those things. Yeah. Yeah, and I became really entranced with how to tell her story, but I knew that it wasn't an academic story. And I thought, it's, this isn't the right genre for it. So what is the right genre? And the right genre is a children's book. So it's told through the eyes of her children, watching and participating as this quilt unfolds and contributing on their own and being inspired by her example. So, Really, it's about trying to find a way to honor her creativity and her imagination, her ambition through this story. So tell us a little bit about her. What, in short, is her story? So Ellen Harding Baker was an Iowa woman who married very young, um, you know, wouldn't have had a huge background in science education at the time. You know, they, they weren't uh, science was certainly being taught, but it wasn't necessarily something they were saying, girls, you need to go out and learn science. They were more about girls, you need to learn at domestic sciences and things to a certain extent. Mm -hmm. 
And um, she married and was living in Iowa. And I don't know if there's a correlation between this, but Maria Mitchell, who discovered a comet and was a female academic, brought a group of her female students to Iowa to see the stars from Iowa. And it was covered in Ellen Harding Baker's local newspaper the year her first child was born. And so I just had this image of her interested in science and reading this article in her newspaper and knowing that she would never go to college. Yes, it's in the book. Knowing that she would never be able to go to college or university or to study astronomy, um, that this was beyond her, but thinking, well, how do I how do I reach for it anyway? How do I make it part of my life in a meaningful way? And how do I ensure that other girls get this opportunity as well? And do you know anything about the story of how the quilt got to the Smithsonian? Her daughter, Carrie, donated it. Um, so the family clearly recognized and treasured her achievement. I mean, there is a tragic story and I don't, general, I don't generally talk about this with children because she didn't, um, she died fairly young. Consumption, you know, all of those things women died of at the time and her husband had taken her to a warmer climate. And so the children um, grew up without having her consistently in their life. And yet they still treasured this achievement of hers enough to ensure that it was donated. And I think that that is a testament to how they felt about her. Do you know whether it's ever been on display? It has, but not recently. And of course, with COVID. Mm, yeah, right. You know, I would love to go see the quilts. Oh. I would love to do many things right now. <laughs> this is not going to happen. You know, I would well, love to go I would think that would be a great um, author opportunity to go mm -hmm. actually visit the quilt with your book next to the quilt. We did stitch a mini version of it as a family, which is the closest I've come to it, is that we now own a miniature version about that big, which was um, a charming endeavor. And I can't imagine, you know, the length of time it took me to do that. I can't imagine her doing seven years. I mean, that's, that's dedication is seven years of her life as babies were being born. And, you know, she's running a household and all of these other things. And yet she still finds time to do this magnificent artwork. I'll just have to, I'm compelled to throw a tiny bit of astrology into this. Seven years is a Saturn cycle. So that's a, a measurement of working on something and then having a moment of seeing what you've done with it. So mm -hmm. pretty incredible. Um, your own background with sewing, you have a background in sewing yourself. A little bit. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm so impressed by what other people do. I sort of downplay any ability I have. Um, you know, I'm really great at whipping up a Halloween costume when needed. Uh, we, um, the children demand things, you know, sew me a, a car puppet or a truck puppet or sew me this or sew me that. And so, you know, I do that kind of sewing for the household, um, you know, not on the scale that Ellen Harding Baker would have, but certainly, the sewing machine is, is being pulled out frequently just to stitch things up or to, to make napkins or sew curtains or something. Um, your book is part of, switching gears here, your book mm -hmm. is part of a really interesting series yeah. of other children's books. Um, can you say anything about how you got in with that group and what that group of books is, is like? So my editor at Albert Whitman at the time was Wendy McClure. And she is, um, Wendy McClure has written The Wilder Life, an account of her year living according to Little House on the Prairie. Oh my goodness. And so she has a huge, huge love of 19th century literature. And I'm sure this is entirely why I ended up in this cluster because this is something that she's very committed to is uh, women's lives, telling women's stories, et cetera. And I know Little House and Prairie's 20th century, but it's still got that kind of, you know, aesthetic. Mm -hmm. And so she, um, I think was instrumental in acquiring a number of these books about women who did interesting things. So we have books about, you know, a woman who cha challenged Charles Dickens on his representation of Jews in literature. And, 
you know, just individually did so as a member of the public, created a writing campaign to Dickens and he wrote back and eventually he shifted his perceptions. And so you see how um, ordinary people take those opportunities and create change in spaces you don't necessarily think they can create change. There are also stories of incredible um, resilience. So Alicia Alonso dances right. on. I was gonna ask um, about that one. Yeah, it, which is a great book about um, a ballerina who in fact loses her sight and has to struggle through um, being visually impaired. And you know, as a dancer, falling off the stage is a really big thing. So how do they compensate for that? and continue to nurture her career? And how does she persist on in instilling the love of dance in the next generation, despite this kind of um, visual perception issue she's working with? Because I think she had some limited vision. So, so yeah, we have really fascinating stories under that umbrella. And I think it's a nice cluster to be a part of because you learn about other forgotten people as well. People living just, sort of ordinary lives and doing extraordinary things and not drawing a lot of attention to themselves. Do you know anything about uh, Mary Walker? The book is Mary Walker Wore Pants. Oh, I've seen that book. I've been thinking about getting it for my daughter for Christmas. And I just, I just love that wearing pants can be, you know, it was, it was an incredible act of bravery in an era when you knew that you were subjecting yourself to um, verbal assaults for leaving the house wearing pants. I will have to say, in my teen years, dress code of my high school, mm, mm -hmm. it's a problem. Um, so it's there's still in in the lives of people who are or, who are still here. It was an issue, so it could resonate with a lot of people. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any other uh, topics that you're thinking of? Are you going to do more children's books, or you... so my second book is coming out from Harper Collins in 2023, and it's more poetic. Uh, it's called When You Were New, and it's being illustrated by a fabulous author, Lenny Wen, who does beautiful, beautiful illustrations. And my third book also coincidentally has stars in the title, and I just signed a contract for that last week, and it's about a boy who helps clean the stars at night. So, we, you know, I'm, I, don't, I can't write everything to do with stars, but I'm really pleased that book number three has a kind of continuity there, but also imaginative. And I have other picture book biographies that I've been working on, but I think that for, um, I'm very lucky to have one out now and two forthcoming, but I think that in terms of the business of publishing, it can be hard to keep selling if you've, all, if you've only got one book out because people want to mm -hmm. see your track record right. and your commitment to promotion. Unfortunately, we know that. Mm -hmm. And it, 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 that actually has made, reminded me, we do need to uh, acknowledge the extraordinary illustrations in your book. Mm -hmm. uh, did You were assigned to this illustrator. Did you know her, choose her? I didn't know Louise Piggott, and a lot of people don't know this, but unless you're a very famous illustrator or a very famous author, you don't have any say usually in who the illustrator is, and you don't talk to them during the oh. publication process. I love the quilt. And so Louis, I was really fortunate to be paired with Louise Piggott, and they said, you'll love her. She does beautiful stars. And there's this, and because we talk about how they are naming children, they're you know, naming the stars in the quilt after different constellations, after different things they're reading about, they're reading Greek mythology. She's done these beautiful spreads which feature um, you know, Greek gods in the sky or Roman gods in the sky, um, which are just gorgeous. But yeah, it's an interesting thing that you don't speak to the illustrator. And so what happens is you see the proofs and you know, I, I kind of felt badly for Louise because between my editor who was an expert in early 20th century and late 19th century, and me, who's a 19th century scholar, we were saying really finicky things like the curtain length is wrong, <laughs> or no, 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 they wouldn't sit on a book, or no, the sleeves, yeah, the sleeves won't work. Oh, he has to have a vest on, right? The kind of nitpicky details that only a scholar would care about, this poor woman was getting bombarded with. And meanwhile, you know, she's doing these beautiful spreads of of starry skies and constellations and the children imagining new constellations based on what they value and what excites them. So yeah, she's done phenomenal work in that. 
it's a gorgeous, gorgeous book. Thank you. Uh, all right. So the other thing I want to talk to you about is your really whimsical, unusual approach to social media. Uh, I follow you on Instagram and your posts all involve dolls. Your dolls did a virtual book launch. So tell us about your dolls. Okay. So how this happened was I attended a uh, mock acquisitions panel. So an acquisitions meeting at a press is when they decide whether to acquire your book. And so it was neat to actually see this press stage an acquisitions panel and they went through all of the things. But one of the things they attended to quite surprisingly for me at least was the author's social media presence and how active was the author on social media. And I just thought, oh dear God, I'm not active at all on Instagram. You know, I really want to do something about this. And I was looking at what other book people were doing and you know, lots of people are reviewing books and they have grown their following over time. And I thought, well, do we need one more picture book person reviewing books? And then, you know, there are people who do that interspersed with pictures of their life. They take pictures of their food. And I think if food's in front of me, I just want to eat it. Right? <laughs> I don't want to take the time to make it pretty and take a picture. And upload. I'm like, no, I'm eating that. So I knew that I couldn't do a typical Instagram because it seemed like work. But at the same time, we were going into summer and there were going to be no camps for the children because of COVID. And mm-hmm. so I need an activity to do with them. So we decided to stage a virtual book launch with their toys. And it, it ended up working with dolls because they were kind of the most fun to play with and to pose and to do things with. And it also gave me something, you know, I still have meetings. I st- I'm still working, even though the children are right beside me and not in camp. So I could say, you know, we need taxidermy, right? Doll-sized taxidermy, go forth. And they would go on these scavenger hunts around the house, or I need you to build me X. And they would build something and come back. And so it was a way to keep everyone occupied and give us a shared project during lockdown. And of course, my children are home again this week because someone in their class tested positive. So, you know, they're, they're downstairs trying to figure out what we're gonna do next. Well, let me share my screen and let's take a tour of some of your Instagram account. This is going to, okay, there we go. So can you see, do I have uh, the image of your quilt up there on the screen? Mm -hmm. All right. So here is the doll sized version of the quilt, which you made. Mm -hmm. And that was the first scene we did. Um, because I had just decided, well, if I make a little quilt, somehow we can use it. And so I think that's really what kind of drove the dolls forward. Um, and it's interesting because I can see, you know, as you post more, you gain more followers. So I can see the difference between likes of that versus now, um, how many likes I might get on a new post. Uh, so it does signal a kind of progress in terms of growing a following, which is what um, publishers want to see, right? That you're actually building. And- right. So let's... Um... Okay, virtual book tour. Yes, those, it was important to me because so many people who post dolls on Instagram um, post the younger dolls and they post them. uh, A lot of dolls are posed as kind of Instagrammers or as if they're models from fashion magazines. And we rarely see older women. And I wanted to do a shot with older women, um, in, you know, fashionable older women having fun in conversation, because as I said, it doesn't really show up on Instagram with all the people who post dolls very often. And what better place to do it than a museum? And the other piece is by a friend of mine as well, which we actually, we own a larger version of. Oh, how cute. So basically you and your kids made a little diorama and stuck the dolls Mm -hmm. in. Yep, the bench was made out of Lego. They're, you know, again, um, I think I sewed the quilts and these are my, my, daughter's mice she posed them you can see thimbles are in use uh, there's a picture of me as a child on the wall my mother I think made it to give to my aunt it's like necklace. somebody crocheted a pot holder for the yeah uh, all of those things and you know we just the the idea is that we just find stuff around the house so sweet let's see yeah that's just me and a dinosaur Hold on. there we go yes that's a Turks you know Caicos the book went to Turks and Caicos very nice where my dad is so and we, get, we don't get to see my dad right now but um you know it's a placemat it's 
this invasive plant that keeps coming over from the neighbors that I can't get rid of. So it needed to work for me for a change. Uh, coasters, toilet paper rolls, um, carpet underlay, right? Everything in that scene is something else that's been repurposed to actually create the scene. That is so clever. I just, I just love this account. Ah, here we have someone in an airport. Mm -hmm. Well, early on, we decided that the, we needed avatars. So this was this was me when I have shorter hair. And the idea was that we would actually be able to stage us interacting. Um, the child, This was the children's idea. There had to be a me doll. There had to be one for each of them. Then, you know, my husband said, well, why isn't there one for me? And I thought, well, because it didn't occur to me that you'd want your own doll. <laughs> so, but... Yeah, it's very, it's very considered, I will say that. Oh, my son made an animation. Yeah. The children really are involved. I mean, and I think that that's what adds to the whimsy. Because as I said, there's these wonderful doll accounts online. And um, I think it's really fascinating, particularly during the pandemic, how many people have turned to Instagram and these childhood toys to as an outlet for their creativity when they've lost so much other, you know, stuff that's going on in their lives, this becomes a space where they can be photographers. They sometimes tell stories through their Instagram, you know, their little soap operas going on in some people's accounts. And it's fascinating to see. Yeah, that's, that's one of the Kirby dolls. It was, I spent a lot of time patting dolls so they don't look stick thin. Um, there's kind of politics behind, you know. Oh, oh, well, every detail counts. And I love how you explain in the in the uh, Instagram post what the materials are mm -hmm. used in each one. Mm -hmm. This is great. This is great. Okay. And it's, of course, wheelchair accessible. I've noticed two wheelchairs so far. Uh, here we are. Uh, more and the oh she's in a is she in a uh, in a coffee shop or a yes bistro so or something? this is a we go to New Brunswick every summer and in New Brunswick Canada and this is a very recognizable coffee shop if you're from that town and so um you know the children said well we can't go so why don't we send the dolls and he's actually holding a book by a friend of of mine, um, life is like Canadian football and other folk songs, which is a very parodic and funny work that also just came out. So other people's books appear in the the pictures and occasionally get shout outs. But yeah. I mean, that's the thing on a book account when you're promoting yourself, how often can you just promote the same book over and over and expect to get likes? Right. And it's yeah. not that I expect social media to sell books studies show us it really doesn't show you know it doesn't sell that many books but um especially when picture book people are essentially only talking to other picture book people you know so this becomes a way to reach a di slightly different audience and also to continue to ensure that i'm generating original content i'm not just posting about the same book over and over well and it's certainly another form of creative self-expression here Mm -hmm. uh, okay, let's see. Moving on. Oh, yes. Here we have the dolls are at the pool. Is this your husband? Uh, this was, these are just two, brand, I think I got him for a dollar in the dollar store a decade ago. Um, yeah, just a couple of, of dolls posed by a pool. I think my brother-in-law took this post. Uh, he thought it was really funny and he's an architect. And so he's loaned me these miniature chairs. These are in real life high-end expensive chairs and so he's just I've got a whole collection right now my my doll collection is very well seated and then here we are going to uh Anna Wintour's office at Vogue and this was this just amused me I don't think some and, people and she's, got, she's got the quilt on uh, in the background on the yeah. wall because she's she can have what she wants she's Anna Wintour yeah <laughs> Oh. Uh, yes, and this is this was kind of funny because people on Facebook and Instagram and Twitter often post unboxing videos when their books arrive. So in theory, this is the one thing we could have actually done during lockdown was do an unboxing video, which made it funnier not to do an unboxing video, but just to show our family posed as we looked at the books. 
So again, every, you know, coasters and tea towels are used here. Condiment lids wrapped with wool. The blanket is, the blankets are old socks that have holes in the toe that we trim down. So just the, the male doll is sitting on a pin cushion. <laughs> My husband made in high school. Oh, that is, now, now that you say that, it certainly does look like a pin cushion. Uh, let's see what else we got. Um, my children's favorite bar. Yeah. <laughs> this is this is where the taxidermy, this is one of those scenes where if you know this bar and the bar owners actually oh. commented, this makes a lot of sense. That's yeah. great. So that's tax. Okay. So you got an animal and uh, is it a skull or something? Yeah. Uh, or, um, it's, we use the head of a puzzle and then one of the plastic animals that children often have to do the taxidermy. So they had a lot of fun there. More Lego from my son, <laughs> but they do wonderful things. You know, they, as far as arts and crafts go, they learned to make homemade glue the other day. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Okay, summer camp. So this is the, uh, the they, couldn't go to, they couldn't go to camp this year because COVID. So they made a camp. Yeah, we all, we all got together and made a camp down to making little three ring binders from scratch. and. My daughter learned she doesn't like making God's eyes at any scale, which is fine. I never actually found them that interesting, but it was kind of neat to try and reproduce them on toothpick size. So yes. Yeah, and again, museums and things. There are all kinds of little in-jokes in there. Um, you know, there's a, there's a Yeti foot. Um, my husband's last name is Vogel and it's a Vogelsaurus egg. So, you know, we, we talk about things and whatnot. And, I don't know that any class will actually access these. I've got a whole teacher's guide ready to go up on the website that I haven't posted yet. Um, I can't imagine this will be part of it. Oh, you might be surprised. <laughs> Another author photo, there you go. Yes, um, my sister-in-law gave me her Barbie furniture from her childhood and I couldn't figure out what to do with it except a boudoir photo. <laughs> well, so why not? Oh, this is part of what uh, I got to tell you. This one really appealed to me. I have a background in Texas. So oh. um, tacos, there you go. Yeah, someone asked about where to buy it. So the purchasing information is actually in the, the, the picture. Uh, if anyone is interested and really needs their own little taco truck, it's a delightful ethical firm that I think hand makes everything in the U.S. Oh, so that's not one you made. That's when you. No, no, I'm. Making a taco truck might be beyond me. One of the interesting things is that um, the world of Instagram is often very pristine, you know, with influencers showing their lives. They often look very pristine and the people who post dolls on Instagram mirror that. And this is just closer to my reality. You know, the children have followed me into the bathroom and stolen the towels, right? This is, this is more what life is like for me than, <laughs> yeah. The arm coming out saying, where's my towel? Mm -hmm. that's so funny and again it's lego and soap dishes and upside down egg cup i think a mirror my grandmother got in a clinique promotion in the 80s you know it's just whatever's around oh and Anna gables. green gables yeah perpetual favorite with people i noticed that there's a barcode on the back of the book that's great mm -hmm. Yeah, we, we really went from making the miniature books. Yes, that was, that was part of the fun part. It was having these little things that we print out occasionally. Uh, the book pile in my son's bedroom. I think anyone who appreciates piles of books beside their bed um, and is running out of bookshelf space will, will really relate to <laughs> what is happening in my son's room. <laughs> So it's happening in my living room. It's, I didn't think to put dolls on it. That's excellent. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Okay. What's happening here? We just, you know, I don't even think, I think we were going to save this for a father's day post, but the funny thing was my son and his friends all got really interested in us photographing this outside and just kind of fascinated and boys, you know, are discouraged from playing with dolls. And yet I will say, you know, 
the action figure community among men on Instagram is insane, but it's not dolls, it's action figures. So it was neat to see all the boys just kind of going, well, what's this? How do you make this? What is this made of? I think we titled this, How the Sausage is Made. You have, this is so meta. The dolls are doing a mock photo shoot of dolls. Yes, yeah. And my, my daughter made, you know, the little drawing of the space station. You know, they're, again, they were all, they're all very involved in pulling everything together. Again, very meta. So uh -huh. Not your traditional cover reveal. And that is something for people who are unfamiliar with this that authors do. They actually have these big things where they promote their their um, books through cover reveals. My daughter wanted to do a caveman. She has one, children have wonderful and um, unachievable ideas. Like let's have a medieval castle with knights running across. <laughs> I'm not creating armor for a, you know, an army of dolls, but a caveman was more reasonable. Just oh, using I paper mache. This is how they learned to do paper mache for the first time. So the, the cave is paper mache? The cave is paper mache, yeah. And this was a, a request. I occasionally take requests and this was a request to do a farmer's market. Um, I think what astounded me was that a government, um, a PR firm working with a government agency reached out to me about this and the possible of, possibility of partnership. It's like, you know they're dolls, right? And they said, yeah, 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 I'm like, okay, we're good but I still can't figure out how they're going to use this in terms of a government agency. But I'm glad government agencies have whimsy. I felt good about that. Uh, I'm very pleased. Okay, so now you've gone into a bookstore. Yes, yes, a well-known um, bookstore in Sackville, New Brunswick. A lovely place that's a, a small college town, essentially. And the college town feel, I think, is quite clear here. My children oh. actually read like that. Okay, an actual child. That's my Living daughter. Oh. We don't use their full faces on Instagram. Um, I'm not comfortable with that. No. When this was the book launch. So rather than do an in-person book launch that people would attend, what we did was stage um, a week of posts where people were, where dolls were attending an in-person book launch. Um, and again, it's the one thing you can do during a book launch is to actually have during a pandemic to have an in-person book launch but we made the decision to do it this way uh, I think this is the first one I saw ah uh, see and yes this is where you see I a, a kind of acknowledgement that our lives are messy we're on zoom and we have these pristine backdrops behind us and yet in front of us our lives are chaos and this um was something I really, really felt, you know, and I think we all feel a little bit right now that there's, you know, there's a lot more stuff happening off camera. Yeah, look at, look at what's under the desk. This is real. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And a dish behind the laptop. That's mm -hmm. real. So there's more with this one. You see it from different angles. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, Taco Bell. Okay, what's happening here? I think many of us will have been in a version of that basement. Ah, <laughs> right? okay, so it's in a basement. Yeah, yeah. The, gra the grandparents' basement from the stuck in the 70s, I, I think um, for a lot of people that is instantly recognizable. There's and a phone. Where did you find this? How did you make this? That was mine when I was a little girl. So that was still kicking around. So the couch I made, the slippers I made, um, the Kleenex box is handmade, but yes, so it's a, a, you know, there's the odd thing that slips in from my childhood. I'm fortunate that my mother saved, she didn't save all of my dolls, but she did save a lot of the toys and I made sure to save all the clothes. So you have day four of the launch. We've all had internet connection problems. We've been uh. there. <laughs> oh I, my. I, I did joke, I don't know what it says about me that I'd rather make vertical blinds at one six scale than have an online book launch and spend one more minute on Zoom. But it did feel very real at that moment. 
And oh. my most popular post for reasons, um, I think it must be the cabinet or the color or something, but yeah. I and see. I think the online book launch worked because I've been to online book launches where there are only four or five people in the audience. And I think over a week of engagement, I probably had about, you know, over 500 likes. And some of those were um, reproduced different people, but a lot of them were individual likes on people. Yeah. My son made the treadmill. I was very proud of that. As he should be. All right. What is this? Day seven of the launch. I don't oh, know. This... Do you remember the woman who was being interviewed by CNN and then tweeted a photo of herself sitting in, she was essentially sitting in her underwear in a room of toys with this kind of balance uh you know looking professional from the neck up but again all of this happening behind her the mess so again it was kind of this acknowledgement that there's so much going on behind the scenes oh isn't she pretty that's the rosa park style oh. yeah so. rosa's reading in solidarity yeah this is someone else who was published by my press at the same time. Kalina Miller's book came out. And, and kids, um, kids are looking at it. That's good. Yeah. yeah. It is a great young adult book for anyone who's looking. I sent a copy to my public school because I thought, you know, public school libraries are often underfunded and have budget issues. And I wanted to tell children that, yes, they could also, you know, the children I had gone to my school, that they could do something like this someday. These are actual Halloween costumes my children have worn. So we just dress the dolls in versions. The, the paper bag princess is a, an eternal favorite with, um, with children. Okay. <laughs> Again, more 70s furniture inherited from my, um, my sister-in-law and figuring out what to do with it. And this was supposed to be an announcement that my poetry collection had been accepted, which is called Poems for Reluctant Housewives. And my children decided this post was too depressing. So they vetoed the, this is the establishing shot and said, no, we need to have a happy family. So yes, my Poems for Reluctant Housewife, which is a pandemic collection of poetry is coming out. And um, this is more the mood of that, but. This is a Calgon take me away moment. Ugh. Oh yes. All right, then you took the dolls outdoors. What was going on here? I simply, um, I had a meeting. So I handed the dolls over to the family and um, my brother-in-law took photos, the children posed them, my sister-in-law helped stage things and the family just essentially went to town in the woods, which is uh, on my husband's family farm. And then Narnia. we went to Narnia, this is so wonderful. Who doesn't wanna to go to Narnia? Yeah, and you know, again, Building these things with my children is a lot of fun. Paint, my daughter and I painted the backdrop. We collected the, the slate from our front porch, which is flaking off to glue onto a fireplace. So we- Oh yeah, now you can see it. Yeah. Yeah, you can see it every time you track in and out of my house because it's chipping off. Whenever I sign a book a contract, we get sushi. Oh, so yes. we're having sushi. Yes, was our sushi. Excellent. Well, and if people want to follow you, you are, oh, this is your latest one. I mm -hmm. love this. So you've got, she stitched the stars graffiti in the background. My son is doing a graffiti unit at school. So this was a great opportunity to do kind of a graffiti post and have a lot of fun with it. And okay. What's with this uh, sign in the background? <laughs> If you scroll one over, you'll get a better uh, a better look at it. Um, one one more post. Uh huh. So is it me you're looking for? Is that Lionel <laughs> Richie? Yeah. There were a lot of discussions about what to put up. You know, lost giant tarantula. Um, you know, lost man eating python. You know, answers to Fluffy. But this was uh, more instantly recognizable. So if anyone wants to follow this on Instagram, you are my PB jam. Yes. And that's also yeah. your website, my PB jam. It is. My, my website is underdeveloped. Um, 
we're very busy during the pandemic. <laughs> you know, children keep having to come home in quarantine. So, you know, working full time and doing this and yet yeah, the website hasn't, uh, hasn't fully evolved yet, but it will happen. Oh, I think it's, it's part of the whimsy. So I'm looking to see if there are any comments or questions, and I am not seeing any. Well, that means we've done a good job of answering everything. Well, I really appreciate your spending so much time. Uh, this has been a delight. I am, yes, this I am giving this book to my fairy goddaughter for Christmas. Oh, wonderful. So, uh, yeah, it'll be perfect. And uh, I hope any of you out there who are looking for something for an, an inquisitive child, this is a wonderful story and really fun. Well, so thank, thank you very, very much. And thank you for doing this. This was such a, a fun opportunity. I, I don't think I've actually talked to anyone about the Instagram posts before and kind of the decision-making that goes into them or the, so it was, it was interesting to do that. I appreciate it greatly. Okay, so we're going to uh, end now. By every, oh, and so again, the book is She Stitched the Stars, a story of Ellen Harding Baker's solar system quilt, and it is for sale online. Bye, everyone.